Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Auxiliary Memory. There are various types of auxiliary memories and various names with which you must be aware. Among them, one is the magnetic disk. So in this video, I'll be talking about the construction, working, properties, advantages and disadvantages of magnetic disk. Let us begin. First, to understand about the auxiliary memory. Auxiliary memory is what? Auxiliary memory, it is a kind of some low cost memory which contains some programs or information for the long term or sometimes when there is no direct use of that particular information that is also being intact. So auxiliary memory is a low cost, highest space and slowest approach storage in any computer system. So you must remember this. And what is the property? Means this particular memory holds the data for future purpose. Even if there is a power failure, if you switch off, switch on, even then auxiliary memory will store the data. So there are various other terms also, which is used means auxiliary memory, it may also be referred as auxiliary storage, secondary memory, secondary storage, external memory or external storage. So these are the various names via which it can also be understood. In the early forms of the auxiliary storage, right, uh, it was in the form of the punched paper tape, punched cards and magnetic drums. But from 1980s onwards, there are some very popular form of the auxiliary storage, which is about the magnetic disk, about which I'm going to talk in this particular video, magnetic tape and optical disk. So these are very popular forms. Here in this particular image, you can see some of the form of auxiliary memories have been shown. Now come to the magnetic disk. See, what is magnetic disk? Magnetic disk, you must remember, this is a surface device. Means it stores the data on its surface, right? So this is surface device. And magnetic disk, these are also semi-random devices, right? And it is very popular device. You must remember it. And it is mainly used for the direct access storage device. What happened? Because here data can be stored, data can be read, data can be write from the magnetic disk. So it uses magnetization process to store this particular data, to write, to read, to access, to rewrite the data. It stores data in the form of track, spots and sectors. What is this track and sector? You can see this particular diagram. Here it shows the structural representation for a magnetic disk. Here you can see some circular plate is being shown. This is actually a platter. So each platter consists of co-centric circles which is known as tracks. You can see there are three tracks. Track number one. You can see this is second track. This is third track. And these tracks are further divided into sector. You can see. This is one sector, this is another sector, sector number two, this is sector number three of this track. Similarly, there may be sec there must be sectors in the other tracks also. It means these tracks are divided into sectors and the sectors are the smallest division in the disk, right? As you can see over here. So, and in this particular diagram, you can see same numbers of sectors have been shown. Like in this particular case, 1, 2, 3, this is 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 sectors in each and every track. There may be some variation in the sectors also. Here you can see as sector is being shown, it means each and every sector will store some data. So the number of bytes which stored in every sector that is same. So every sector will store same amount of data, same number of bytes. It means all tracks, like as in this particular diagram, three tracks have been shown. So all these three tracks, the, it will store same amount of data. But as you can see, this sector on this particular track and sector, you can see one one in this track. 
see as each and every sector is storing same amount of data so same data is stored in this sector same data is being stored in this particular sector also it means when same number of bytes or data is stored in each sector then inner sector right as you can see i have shown inner sector suppose you are saying this is one one and this is sector one so inner sector it shows or it uh, pretends high bit intensity in comparison to the outer sector so it shows high bit intensity right you must remember over here so this is what a one platter is being shown but if there is a requirement of the large disk storage so that can be created by stacking multiple disk here you can see multiple platters multiple platters have been arranged over here it means if you arrange many disk multiple disk which are having same track same set of tracks then they will form a shape of cylinder and each disk has its own read write head as you can see over here there are there is a read write head for this platter there is a read write head for this platter read write head for this platter so each and every platter is having its own read write head so as i have told you that magnetic disk these are the semi random devices and a track on this means data is stored in the sector in a disk in a track itself sorry so it means a track on a disk that is being selected randomly but data is written to means data can be written into the disk or data can be read from the disk in a serial manner only and as you can see in this particular diagram the disk are mounted on this particular spindle means this is a rotary kind of thing it means it is a rotary drive dc motor is attached to this particular uh, spindle and what happens uh, when there is a requirement to read or write the data into that particular disk then what will happen first this read write head right read write head will be moved to the respective track if you are going to write the data into this particular platter number 1 read write head will move to this if on this platter read write head will this particular read write head will move and what will happen suppose you are talking about the data which is going to be stored in the second platter then this read write head will be moved to the address track suppose at this particular track and now it will remain stationary because now it has selected that particular track but now disk will rotate so that it can bring the starting position of address sector under this particular read write head so it will move until the required address sector is not reaching under this particular head then disk continues to rotate and information can be written into the uh, like uh, this or information can be read out from the disk and what will happen the disk continues to rotate information can be stored and accordingly the whole operation is being performed the diameter of each platter that can range from 1.8 to 5.25 inches so you must remember as you can observe over here there is a different heads for every platter and corresponding platter track will be selected with the help of that read write head so this is how this magnetic disk can work or the information can be stored and can be read out some of the common examples popular examples of magnetic disk are hard disk zip disk floppy disk so these are the basic examples of the magnetic disk and if you have to list out the properties what are the major properties of magnetic disk you can say it is very easy to carry this is very reliable fast access device and it is suitable for read write data frequently it is a cheap storage device this is very very reliable and there is one very important point this magnetic disk it must be prevented from the dust in case if there is any availability of dust particle on this particular track or something so what will happen when read write head that flies over the disk and in the case of the availability of any dust particle that can corrupt the disk 
So this is a very important point. It must be in the dust free environment. Now, when we are talking about the accessing data, right? Accessing data on the disk, then there are certain parameters which you must remember. Seek time, latency time. What are these parameters? You must be aware about this. So first is the seek time. What is this time? This is the time taken to move read-write head to the desired track. Desired track means in which particular track information is to be stored or from the read. Second is the latency time. It is also known as a search time. Search time means the time required so that starting position of address sector, it can come under the read-write head. Searching, searching of the address sector, start position of address, address uh, sector, that is what the latency time. Data transfer rate is the rate at which data is either written into the disk or read from the disk. So that is what the data transfer rate. So what happened once the read write head is positioned properly onto a respective track and sector, the data can be written or read from the disk. And last one is the excess time. Excess time is the total time which is required to move the read write head to the address sector. So excess time is equal to the seek time plus latency time. Seek time means the time required to move to desired track and then finding out the starting position of the address sector. So you must remember all these parameters also. Now, some of the advantages of the magnetic disk, as I've told you that this is economical memory, easy and direct access of data is possible in this particular case. Large amount of data can also be stored because multiple disks can be uh, like clubbed together and huge amount of data can also be stored. Here, data can be rewritten, data can be updated if there is any requirement. And if we talk about the data transfer rate, that data transfer rate is better in comparison to the magnetic tapes. Means data can be written or read from the disk at a higher rate. And corruption of data, data can be corrupted, that, that possibility is less in comparison to the tapes. Data can be accessed randomly, it means data access time is less. But there are certain disadvantages and limitations also. If you are talking about the uh, like price, its cost, definitely it is less expensive than RAM, but it is more expensive than magnetic tape memories. There is a requirement of dust-free environment. As I've told you that in case of availability of any dust particle that may corrupt the disk. This is not suitable for the sequential access. Random access can be done very frequently, but it is not suitable for this. And in case if there is any failure of disk drive or disk itself, that may result the loss of the whole information that is being stored in that particular magnetic disk. So these are the certain disadvantages or limitations also. Thank you so much for watching this video.